All right, everybody, I got a special treat for you today. So I'm finally getting around to building these LG 120 amp hour cells. Now I bought these from batteryhookup.com. They don't have many more, but these were $49.99 per cell with seven of them. That brings you to 350 bucks and 10% off $35, which actually covered the shipping. So all in all, these were came out to $50 a piece with shipping. These are great brand new batteries from like a Chevy. Yeah, there's there's two cells inside here your positive and your negatives two tabs so the issue with connecting these all up is that you have to connect these tabs and well they're not all exactly the same length you got to kind of be inventive now we've all seen where uh, david did like some aluminum blocks and drilled some holes through them well not all my tabs are long enough for a uh, screw to go through there's not enough gap there so it kind of got to get a little inventive so uh one idea was to use some of this here wire now this is some four gauge uh silicone thin strand ofc copper wire but you know it would be kind of bulky you'd have connection here going out obviously you would connect this these two tabs together with a lug like this and you'd have like a jumper wire down to the one below it you know i guess you, know, you could angle it this that, and the other but i wanted a little cleaner setup just because i you know hey let's try and do something special here right so what i came up with was these uh copper bars so i took them kind of measured them out i made them all the same let's see to make the connection i decided to go with some quarter 20 bolt now these might look a little funny and that's because they're not just steel these are actually made from aluminum so aluminum we know on the scale of conductivity metals i believe it goes silver copper aluminum and so on and so forth by going with a aluminum it's like not as good as copper obviously it is better than steel you know it's not that much more expensive and kind of help with the the current flow right you take these bus bars, right? You uh, cut them and bend them and drill a hole in them. And the drill bit I used is a little bigger. It's like the next size up from a quarter. So it's uh, nine thirty seconds, right? And you put this in your vise and you go at it. You want to go slow. That way you get, you get a cleaner, cleaner cut, right? And then once you're done, you get use some type of file and just kind of knock it down clean the edges up all that good stuff so now to make these connections so we're going to want to push the the longer tab up to the shorter tab now you can use some pliers like this maybe you can use you can use some vice grips right keep that together or maybe even something like a clip but you're going to need something to keep that together when we're drilling through here there's not much tab there the drill bit so we're going to have to go outside the tab just a little bit but we should be able to get most of the bottom one. So uh, on this end cap one, they have these here. And I had to go in and, and trim this piece out of the middle here, right? You know, these tabs can get a little close together. Because if not, there's a, there's a piece of plastic in the way. And you can't get the cells to connect. So, uh, you know, you just pop these off with a screwdriver. Be careful not to puncture the cell. Uh, trim them up and then put them back in. Now, it's the only one you have to do. The rest of them are, like, are not like that. It's just the end cap version. So since this tab is the uh, the short one, I'm gonna actually use it as the main positive. Yeah, so this is gonna be my main positive. So we're gonna start around on the other side. Man, this thing's heavy. Oh no. That hurt. Ah oh, man, bleeding. All right, so let's uh, let's see here. So. All right, and so this is gonna be my bottom one, right? So I chose this one as the bottom one because you can see the tab is destroyed. You know, I'll be able to keep a better eye on it instead of putting it down deep in the battery and not, not be able to see it. This is going to be our main positive, right? The aluminum side, positive, negative. So I need to connect these two. All right, so you can see how far away these tabs are, right? You, know, you can't just connect them. There's just not enough tab. There's that piece of plastic down the middle. So there's that plastic down the middle there. You can see I had to cut out on that that uh, that top one, right? So we have to make these tabs connect. And I think the cleanest way to do that is with this here jumper bus bar. Line these up to where you get the best, you know, the most amount of meat and they still touch so that you can drill a hole through it. And it'll be something like this here.
So this combined with some aluminum nuts and bolts, quarter 20. Now, if you can find these smaller, I'm just more, I'm familiar with the quarter 20 because of the film standard equipment and stuff. And so I did it. Could I have went with something smaller? Yeah. Would have been a little easier? Yes, because I have this here hole punch. And if I could get something that's the size of the hole punch down here at the bottom, this would have been a whole lot easier. Instead of having to drill through these tabs and, you know, maybe ripping them or whatnot. So we got some pretty good meat on this one. And we're going to do these, you know, separately, not one at a time. We're going to get this clamped and try and do it right down the middle. Uh, I found it a little easier if you start with hole punch. Try to get it in there as deep as possible. Sometimes uh, the shell gets in the way, so you're going to have to uh, pop it out of the shell so you can get in there a little better. So this is what it looks like without the shell on it. You have two 60 amp hour lithium cells. Make sure they're flat. Line them up. Put this hole punch in there as far as we can. It's not exactly in the middle, but it's not bad. Now you want to check, make sure you're not, uh, make sure everything's lined up. Make sure you're not hanging over the edge if possible. I think that's good. Everything's lined up and just ah, punch right through it. So there's our first hole. So next we're going to drill through this. So the safest, <laughs> the safest way to do this is to uh, have some type of a backing. The right size hole punch, this would be amazing, but I couldn't find it. If you can find it, help me out. Maybe you'll be able to help out somebody else in the future. All right, so we check it make sure everything's okay. That seems it's going to be perfect. So now we can get our bolt through there and our nut and our bus bar. Ta-da! So that's going to be the idea of this. Now this will be in the pad here. Make sure these aren't touching. All right, so now we can put this together and we can mark out where our, uh, where our hole is going to be for the other tab. All right, so that's lined up. That's deep enough. See, there's plenty of tab on this one. Just give it a little poke. Make a little mark. It doesn't be a mark. It can be a physical mark. It can be a marker mark. It's whatever. Uh, marker mark. Nice. All right. So take this. Ta-da. See, and this is why I was taking them apart because you can't get this in there to get a good backing on it and especially with this aluminum it's so uh, malleable all right perfect This bus bar you can put on the top or the bottom or bend it out a little bit to make it where it'll fit the gap. So what we the problem we have here is that if I do this on the outside, I think the aluminum the aluminum holes don't line up. So you can see where it's off in there. But if I do it on the on the top of it, then I'm able to uh, clear the gap a little better. So that's how you would. Or that's how I see to be the best way to connect these batteries it's super clean looks professional there's no wires no jumper wires hanging out you can hide everything with tape and it'll fit better in your rv or compartments all right well, i'm gonna finish all these up and then we'll be back after i got it all done all right so i'm trying to burn this battery down a little bit so i can connect it with the rest of my solar system now i've got uh, five kilowatts worth of boston power cell my makeshift off-grid power wall so I'm running my computer while it's mining and it's anywhere between 350 and about 400 watts. So this is kind of the final rendition of it. <laughs> I blew up my, uh, my good BMS so I'm kind of just using this for now. Plus and minus on this side right here. And well when you're stacking these cells you kind of have to sometimes you got to go in and take the 
take it all apart and flip it so that you can get these leads together and I was going off of this positive and this negative and I had went in there and swapped it around when I went to go hook the BMS up it didn't blow up yeah it didn't it took about a minute or two and it finally just got warm started bubbling out it was one of those good dally BMS's so a little disappointing come over here let me show you show you my bus bar system here all right so check that out Pretty cool, huh? Little copper bus bars with some all aluminum quarter 20 threads. Yeah, with my little alligator clips for BMS leads because you can't solder on onto aluminum, or at least I can't, and I wasn't trying. I even had the aluminum solder stuff, and nah, it's just not worth it. Ow. So yeah, so we got the BMS, it'll come up here like this. And we got some old cheap wire for now. So this is uh, another one. So this, each one of these 24 volt batteries is like, uh, is about three kilowatts maximum. If you do the 120 times like 28 volts, it's like 3.3 .3 or something like that. So yeah, there's the bus bars. They're all nice and tight, custom. Uh, there's some like corrosion right here where I was trying to I was trying to solder the leads to the copper bar I just couldn't get it hot enough so here we go let's shine some light now we can see hey look at there all right so now you can get a better better close-up of what we got going on here so like I said that's an all aluminum bolt going through we got uh, copper bus bars making the jump there and it's a 7s 24 volt LG, there's the numbers right there. LG 120, uh, you know, a cheap 60 amp BMS for now. And I'm gonna do some, do some double-sided tape on here. You see how I put tape down, then double-sided tape, that way it doesn't stick to the, the cell wrapper. And I'll put some more double-sided tape and we'll put that on there. And we'll connect our leads up there. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? So, this one's getting down. I think I need to get to uh, 24.3 volts. So, it was just at 25.9, probably 15 minutes ago. So, we'll let it keep going. And this one needs to be all taped up. Get all taped up, looking sweet. Man, them things are heavy. That little, that little package right there is heavy. And I need to weigh it. But... Yeah, so this one's all done, minus the cheap BMS. I went ahead and bought some more on eBay. Link in the description. Affiliate links will be in the description for all the things in the video if you want to purchase them. Inverters are awesome. I don't think you can find these batteries anymore, but definitely the, the good BMS from Dally, they're only like 25 to 30 bucks with the, uh, and it comes with the charge port. So we'll just go through that for now. But yeah, this is the star of the show right here with the bus bar. I think that was a pretty cool way. It might have taken a little longer, but... Here we go. So yeah, there's your uh, copper bus bars. And you just cut them with a, pit, a pair of tin snips and drill your holes and bend them up. And there you go. You got it. So yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's a nice tight little package, huh? I wish I could have made my whole power wall out of those would have uh, saved me probably a little bit of money. Uh, well, maybe not, I don't know. Three kilowatts for 350 bucks. I can do a little bit better than that. But, you know, once you put materials and stuff, it's probably about the same. All right, so there's, uh, there's the both of them together. I got them coming right off of the BMSs together, down to the wire. And I just have both the positive and negative, the, both the positive leads straight from the battery to the inverter. Yeah, this wire was getting a little warm, now it's not. That's a good eight gauge, like some good, like Windy Hill, or not Windy Hill, but you know, kind of like that. Good eight gauge wire. Yeah, man, those are so pretty. These are such good packs. Brand new, 120 amp hours each. You just can't beat that. For 50 bucks a piece, just cannot beat it. And that looks so good all wrapped up, like a nice little package. Damn, I wish I could buy some more of those. Mm. That's an easy six kilowatts just right there. And what you just seen in the trailer, that was five. All that for five kilowatts. Or you can have just something like this for six. And a nice little package. And then whenever uh, 
the day comes that I'm ready to put this on my power wall or if I want to jump it to 48 volts I just uh, I got another one of these copper bus bars it goes right here and it'll connect to the positive of the other pack and then I got 6 kilowatt 48 volt 24.6 we got to get down to 24 point I think it was 24.3 all right we're just waiting around so we can hook all this up I really don't feel like doing it now but maybe I'll wake up early in the morning and feel like doing something before I get a shower all right early morning battery load test here so you see we've got two cords plugged into it one of them runs in the house that's the uh computer mining some bitcoin so we know that it it usually pulls about 350 to 370 watts from the computer and this fan does 200 watts on low so we're doing 600 watts on this little thousand watt inverter i've got the fan turned to blow on it. it's not it's not even it's not warm or anything you know why not and then we have our six kilowatts worth of batteries 24.1 volts before all this kicked on it was at 24.5 which is yep a little load test i need to get it down to 23.8 now before i can plug it into the rest of the system so well, till then later all right it's like 10 o'clock in the after 10 o'clock in the morning now let's see what we're doing here so with our two 175 watts so that's 350 watts through the 30 amp pcb butt converter batteries were almost up to 26 volts let's see what these uh what my new panels are doing uh, okay that's not that's not horrible we're doing 350 watts from 540 let's just say 500 because they are used so 350 watts from 500 watts not too bad not too bad and then our 1600 watts mm, that's not as good 750 that's 1600 watts worth of panels so it'll get up when we get closer to like 11 o'clock it'll be up to in the up to a thousand all right let's see where we have our balance yep 0.3 millivolts oh these are getting a little out uh, let's come back yeah, but that one's only uh, 0.04 whatever so far so good that is odd these do look like different panels like that's not an illusion the first panel you can see all the the poly cells and that one looks more like a mono i don't know i'm no solar expert but i know when something looks when something looks different 